question. I decided to just describe one uh, research project I'm actually leading. I'm the head person of this project, which is about reform initiatives of teacher education in, in, in Germany. And you will see in a minute that this is strongly theoretically driven. So you will see how the other research projects, uh, which actually uh, uh, are connected to this project, are actually uh, theoretically tied in. Uh, as he mentioned, the publications. Actually, there are already a few more publications in the row. So, I mean, but not published yet. So, I mean, uh, ACU, Learning Sciences Institute, will be delighted. Uh, I want to describe the reform as a departure point, the reform initiatives for the improvement of te teacher education in Germany. And actually, what uh, all, all, this, all this initiative is about is about the implementation of a nationwide reform initiative for the improvement of teacher education. So, and we had the call of applications for all universities connected with teacher education in 2014. That's actually something about 80 universities in Germany are doing uh, to a certain extent teacher education. And we had the first phase of funding July 2015 until the end of 2018. And then we will have the second phase of funding from January 2019 until the December of 2023. We had 85 applications and 19 projects were selected in the first round and we were so lucky to be one of these, group, uh, these universities chosen at the very beginning of what it, because it was a very tough uh, uh, selection process and of course very prestigious. Uh, would you come in in the first round was the highly discussed question. So then in the second round 30 projects uh, were selected too. Uh, so in the total we have 49 projects uh, from uh, 59 universities. There are several universities working together and they are from all federal states selected. And we have in Germany, we have 16 states, federal states, so it was important to include all of them. Uh, but of course the project in the second round received less money than the uh, projects selected in the first round. This initiative is funded by the Ministry of Education and research and it's uh, uh, actually up to 500 million euro which is quite a considerable amount of money i mean if you compare it to natural sciences even then it would not be a big now sum of money but for teacher education it's the biggest amount of money we ever had so it really will change definitely teacher education in germany so what you see over here are actually you see uh, the map of germany with the 16 federal states and you see hamburg over here uh, and then you see all the other places and actually the turquoise one are the ones where you have joint projects and you see quite that uh, Bavaria is strongly represented, uh, that is North, North Rhine-Westphalia. You see that is the former, actually that was here the border of the former GDR, that was the former GDR except East uh, West Berlin. So you see there is actually a lot of, uh, uh, of projects coming up and we have many uh, uh, conferences and where you have to show ourselves and actually uh, University of Ham Hamburg is always very represented. So the aims of the program, what wanted uh, the politics from us, so there were really political aims formulated. Uh, politics wanted us to implement a stronger coherent structure in teacher education programs. That has to do with the fact, if I uh, jump to that one, we had courses in subject education, for example in mathematics or physics, then general pedagogy, and then what we call didactics or subject related pedagogy, that means everything connected to math education. So, and we had that at different parts of the university, different faculties, uh, and the problem was uh, that these were not connected. We, we taught these courses separately, and we expected the students afterwards to integrate this knowledge in their heads, which of course did not function. So that is actually, this coherence is very important. Then the second one, which is a, a something you have all over the world, the call for practical activities. We wanted to strengthen practical activities, internships, and within teacher education, and we wanted to integrate them more strongly within our ordinary teacher program, not something you'd simply add on afterwards at very close to the end. 
So then the improvement of professional guidance, guidance and consulting activities. We have many students entering uh, a teacher education who are simply not able to do so. So there is the discussion about professional guidance, although I think we have many difficulties implementing that. Then uh, heterogeneous student groups. Uh, you, I mean, you have heard that Germany is now has a, a, a ne next wave of immigration. So we have very heterogeneous uh, students. For example, in Hamburg, uh, we have 50% of our students in school have, to a certain extent, a migration background. That means parents or grandparents came over. So our stu future teachers need to have competencies to work with this heterogeneous students group. And there is this call of inclusion. I guess you have the same in, in Australia too. And it is a big difficulty. How do you integrate these handicapped students uh, in ordinary teaching? We had them separated in former times in special schools. Now they have to be included. And what does that mean for teaching and for our future teachers? So these were actually the political points given to us. Uh, and uh, one other thing which was uh, actually negotiated before money was allowed to give uh, to, to be released. Uh, there is a, there was required by politics that the certificates of teacher education in all 16 fed, federal states would be accepted all over Germany. We don't speak about Europe. I mean that is actually the reason why we had the Bologna process and bachelor master studies. But uh, at least even in even in Germany, you had difficulty when you had a, a master degree in, in education in one part of, uh, of Germany and then go to another one. So that was actually the requirement which really was uh, 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 prolonging the process for at least three, three, or three, three more years. So I would now like to shortly describe our project for the improvement of teacher education at the University of Hamburg. The goals of the project, theoretical background, structure of the project. And then I've brought two case studies with me. And they come from math education, but they are to a certain, because they are two of my PhD students, uh, their work. But uh, they are typical for what we are doing in this, within this project. And it's a case study on language and mathematics teaching, and a case study on noticing an internship. And I will always describe theoretical back background, research questions, study design, and first results. So what is the goals of the project? And we call this project professional teaching to promote subject-based learning under changing societal conditions. And you see already here, the, uh, it is our professional competencies, professional teaching we want to promote our future teachers. It's about subject-based learning, subject is in the focus, and it's about this changing societal conditions. We have to enable our students to be good teachers in 20, 30, 40 years. So how can we do that? We name this project with the German uh, acronym Profile. And the really difficult thing was already when uh, the application or the call for applications was released, it was a certain kind of a hybrid project. It was a development and a research project. I learned that it's usual in, Canada, in, in Australia, it's not the case in Germany. You either have a, a, a research project or a developmental project. Uh, so we had to put, integrate that together. Uh, that means we wanted to support professional competencies and their development of future teachers in, at the University of Hamburg. And we wanted to integrate innovative elements for the improvement of teacher education in our ordinary university teaching. So on the long run, we want to change the curricula and really improve on the long run, on a sustainable basis, uh, our education. So what were the uh, departure points and the central deficits? And when I describe that for my university, I can tell you that these are the deficits of nearly all universities uh, in Germany. So we had this increasing heterogeneity of school students and by the way of our future two, uh, students as well. Many of them now have a, a certain kind of a migration background and they even have language difficulties too, although they are studying at a university. So this increasing heterogeneity of students and their learning potential is something we have to bear in mind. And then 
we want to educate our future teachers so that they are able to cope with this heterogeneous student force for actually really for the future and we want to offer subject related teaching under this changing societal conditions. So that was actually our departure point, you will, but you will find these claims in many other projects within this uh, initiative. Our central deficits, and there are, that is typical for German university and teacher education, was this missing integration and networking of the central components of teachers' professional competencies. It means on the one hand subject, and on the other hand general pedagogy and the subject related pedagogics. And then even as a fourth component, we had uh, uh, practical activities internship. So it was not connected. So we said, look, we need to better, we need to develop activities in order to integrate that. Uh, we, uh, as a, something that is very distinct for our project, and it has to do, of course, with me running or leading this project, we always had to identify a, a key person, and that was then me, because we had to have key uh, uh, journal papers. So, uh, and that is the reason why we have a very strong theoretical con uh, background in contrast to a few other uh, uh, projects. And the, the theoretical background relates to the project I was ro running already before. It's actually, we relate ourselves to the teacher professionalism uh, discussion uh, developed in large scale studies like TETS-M. TETS-M is an acronym for an IEA study for teacher education and development study, learning to teach mathematics. And that actually is a mathematical knowledge for teaching. It's a huge project in math education um, by Deborah Ball and Hyman Bass at the University of Michigan. So these two projects and a few others around were really guiding our, uh, uh, us with our theoretical uh, uh, approach. And we referred uh, more st uh, strongly to the approach by uh, Weinert on competencies. Actually, that is an approach which was developed in the frame of PISA study. Then the approach by Schulman on teaching as a profession. I don't need to go into detail. Then the expertise research by Berliner. And then this was further differentiated, as you all know, in the concept of noticing that is actually the Carter et al. that is the group around Berlinger, and then the Faden Es and Shireen group with Shireen, Jacobs and Philip. So you see this uh, are actually uh, the different points we are relating uh, our uh, a theoretical framework. So I have brought with me actually the conceptual model of teachers' professional competencies we have developed in TETS-M and which we have are using in, in our project. So you have two parts of teacher competencies. You have the cognitive part, content knowledge, pedagogical content knowledge, and general pedagogical knowledge. I guess you are all familiar with this kind of distinctions. And then you have on the other part side, you have the effective motivational characteristics, beliefs, motivation, and self-regulation. So that is actually uh, the important distinction. And if, I now, uh, if you now allow me, and I will do that very briefly, describe a little bit more about our theoretical framework, which re uh, relates to the discussion about, about around professional knowledge and professional competencies. And it's especially discussion, you all know, about what is pedagogical content knowledge, PCK, developed uh, by Schulman. And you all know this very famous, I guess it's one of the most cited frame, uh, uh, phrases all over the world, what is P P uh, PCK, the special amalgam of content and pedagogy that is uniquely the province of teachers, their own special form of professional understanding. So that is actually this very famous quote. You will find it in nearly every paper around teacher education and teachers' professional competencies. But if you look in more detail, and that is a very nice survey paper by De Pepe and others, they say, look, everybody quotes it, but there is no consensus what it really means. And um, the Pepe, Verschaffler and Keltermanns brought in a very important distinction which was actually uh, developed by Ken Rowland and Tim Rusvin. And they said, look, there is actually, when you conceptualize pedagogical content knowledge, there are two important distinctions. It's important whether mathematical knowledge, and they refer to math teacher education, but of course it's not restricted to that, whether mathematical knowledge in teaching is located in the head of the individual teacher 
or is somehow a social asset meaningful only in the context of its applications. And you already see that this has remarkable uh, uh, consequences how you describe uh, uh, professional competencies. So if you refer to some kind to some how cognitive perspective, you would distinguish a limited number of components to be part of your pedagogical content knowledge. And then you are interested how these different uh, 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 knowledge facets or competence facets are related and you want to distinguish these from other parts of the professional competencies. If you have a situated per uh, perspective, then you describe pedagogical content knowledge as multidimensional. You uh, emphasize something like teacher's choice, choices which are done simultaneously. Uh, and you always integrate mathematical and pedagogical deliberations. And when you now go further and ask what consequences does that have for how you uh, 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 examine or study pedagogical content knowledge, then you have two different ways of doing it. And of course, it's only a very rough description. If you come from a cognitive perspective, you measure pedagogical content knowledge independently from the classroom context. You usually would use a kind of a test, let's say a paper and pencil test in former time, now web-based, uh, and you try to evaluate the f different facets of teachers' knowledge separately. If you come from a situated perspective, then you would say, look, pedagogical content knowledge can only be assessed within the context in which it is enacted. It means you have to go into classroom, you have to do classroom observations, and so on and so on. And you need, for example, to, have to include teacher, teachers' journals and diaries and whatsoever. And I mean, it's quite obvious if we look at these both perspectives. We have started with Ted's M and other studies from this cognitive perspective, but of course, everybody is now moving in this direction. And I mean, it is a consensus all over, uh, I think, the, at least in math education and general pedagogy, that we need both perspectives. So that is actually uh, the theoretical background uh, of um, our project. And what we are uh, further on uh, um, integrating is a, a, a theoretical framework we have developed in TED's follow-up. These are the follow-up studies of TED's M, which I was carrying out with Sigrid Blümge and Johannes König. And in that we integrated practice-oriented, situated facets linked to the concept of noticing. That means we departed from the concept of noticing and integrated that with the original knowledge-based facets of teacher competence, namely content knowledge, pedagogical content knowledge, and general pedagogy, which we used in our original study, uh, 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 which we measured using the content of mathematics. So, and we distinguished in TED's follow-up, and we use it now in this huge uh, project, uh, we distinguish three f facets of noticing, situated facets of no noticing, uh, which is a little bit different from what Shereen Jacobs and Philip do. Uh, we call that perceiving particular events in an instructional setting. Uh, Shereen and others call that attending to particular events. Uh, then we said interpreting the perceived activities in the classroom. They call it making sense of events in an instructional setting. And the last one, and that is actually very critical, uh, uh, Shereen, uh, Van Ees, Jacobs and Philip, they say, look, you, you need to have some kind of action activity in there, but they uh, only distinguish these two facets. We said, look, uh, and we refer to the work of Ericsson and Neuwig, if uh, the teacher always has to make decisions. Mm -hmm. You cannot only perceive something and then uh, interpret it, yes, and then you have to act. So we included a third uh, facet, which is decision-making, either as anticipating a response to students' activities or as proposing alternative instruction strategies. So that is actually the terminology of the Berliner group, uh, and we call that PID model. So that is actually uh, the theoretical uh, background. So, and this was put uh, into a very nice theoretical frame by Sigrid Blömecke, with whom I'm working now for, I think, 13 years, uh, Gustav uh, Gustafsson and Richard Chaverson. 
uh, and they described competence as a continuum, of course not a continuum in a mathematical sense, uh, so more in a, a, a free way. So you have the dispositions over here, cognition and affect, motivation, it's our original model. Then you have here the situation specific skills, perception, interpretation, decision making, and you have here what you can observe in a classroom when you are, for example, observing future teachers uh, in, in the classroom. So that is actually uh, the model we are, which are underlying all our research studies within the framework. So, and uh, we have in addition taken up some uh, um, uh, a framework, the framework from expertise research, so that we know that you can distinguish between expert teachers and novices. Uh, that means a novice uh, uh, an expert teacher has a stronger repertoire of teaching and learning strategies, of anticipation, of t teaching sit situations, especially when it comes to decision making. Our novices are much weaker than the more experienced ones. So that is actually another uh, starting point. And the challenges for our project was to get all these different, this very ambitious theoretical framework into a working projects and to keep uh, the coherence and the necessity of early publications. I mean it's all over the world the question at the end of the day you have to deliver publications, you have to show what you have described, uh, what you have done uh, and so we have a few publications already in the pipeline and a few more are to come. Uh, and we had to use new assessment formats so you will see in nearly all our studies uh, video-based formats. So we had video-based testing, video-based evaluations. So we distinguished four different areas of activities. Uh, the cooperation between subject and subject-specific didactics, that means mathematics and math pedagogy in my case. Then the aspect of linguistic cultural heterogeneity, inclusion as a big topic for us, and the cross-phase cooperation concerning internship and we actually really want to implement new uh, activities, new uh, uh, teaching courses and really want to integrate that afterwards in our curricula. So actually that is what we call our profile house. So you see first uh, under the roof that is are the project leaders. Eva Arnold is our dean of the faculty and I'm very happy that she is supporting me uh, because it means that you have the faculty integrated in all the activities because it was of course not easy to implement that. We have some kind of coordinator. We have, I'm very happy about that because we have two positions over there, two full positions for evaluation, only for evaluation, one position for communication and transfer and three people for program coordination. And then you see the four columns over here and each of uh, the cells is actually one project and the red ones mean that it is that these are postdocs that means they are full positions with somebody who has already done the PhD uh, and all the others are, uh, are um, PhD students so actually we have if I'm right uh, we have uh, 16 PhD students and something about 10 postdocs so um, and you see that uh, for example mathematics uh, Oh, yeah, math mathematics is in all, uh, 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 in all four phases. That has to do, of course, with the high importance of mathematics. And of course, I was insisting on being included. Then we have German, German teaching in all four parts. And then we have something what we call school rate pedagogy. And we need to discuss about a good translation of that. And then, of course, you have English. So you have various broad, uh, subjects included over here. When it comes to this lingual, linguistic cultural heterogeneity, we had a focus actually uh, on, um, on, on natural sciences. And here is actually another interesting uh, PhD study which is supervised by me. We want to develop a test in order to, to measure the competencies of uh, future teachers with, uh, 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 with to handle or to work with secondary language learners because that is a very hot topic nowadays in Germany. So how can you measure? There are tests around and we think they need to be developed further. So that is actually, I mean, really uh, our house and uh, yes, and we have started to work uh, with, uh, with a different project in 2000. 
uh, uh, 15. We have now nearly a little bit less than two years and we have a little bit more than one and a half years to go. Now go ahead to, uh, to the two projects I have brought with me. And I said it, it, it refers to mathematics because these are the uh, PhD projects and postdocs uh, a project I'm supervising. It's about enabling to notice language aspects in mathematics learning and teaching by future mathematics teachers. It's actually the PhD project by Nadine Krosanke. And the starting point is that we know that there is a, a relation between language proficiency and mathematical performance. I mean, that there is a lot of research around in Germany. There's a lot of research around internationally. We know that language proficiency is a very important point. Uh, our syllabi say in Hamburg for this course say teachers should promote uh, uh, the, uh, language skills in order to offer students equal ed education opportunities. That's stated somewhere in the syllabus. But if we, if we do, go into discussion with teachers and future teachers and they say look I'm a math teacher I do not need to care about language. Why should I care? I'm going to teach them mathematics, language that is part of German teaching or English teaching or whatsoever. So that is really the uh, widespread belief we have to overcome. I mean, we have many, many, uh, uh, only a few difficulties to change the practicing teachers, but um, at least we should be able to change our uh, future teachers. So. That is what we already know, that our future teachers are not sensitized to the role of language in mathematics teaching and learning. And that doesn't only hold for mathematics teachers, it holds for future physics teachers, for future biology teachers. They are really think, okay, we are only a subject teacher and we don't need to care about language. So what we really want to do now is we want, to, or what we are doing and evaluating, we developed two university courses and evaluated them. Uh, referring to the aspects of language. So we wanted to promote professional competencies concerning the role of language in mathematics teaching. And the three research que questions, they are all qu still quite big and we need to see whether we need to cut it down. So which beliefs about the role of language for learning and teaching mathematics do future teachers hold exactly before and after the two interventions? So did we develop good effective learning environments. Which aspects of learning of language in learning and teaching mathematics do prospective mathematics teachers notice and how do they react in specific situations before and after the two interventions? And how are the beliefs about the role of oh sorry about the role of language in learning and teaching mathematics related to these situ situation specific skills? concerning aspects of language. So what role does the PID model plays? So that is actually perception, interpretation and decision making. How is that, how the beliefs uh, connect? That means uh, how far do the beliefs promote or hinder somebody to see something? So what we have as design, we have, we are concentrating at master levels and actually at activities around the internship. Um, and our students go to school for two times uh, in ma at master level, actually for six weeks, two times, and before and after they are prepared with special activities. So we had first, uh, uh, at the first semester in the, ma in, in the master, at master level, we had a seminar where uh, the teachers are, uh, have, have studied the role of language in learning and teaching mathematics. And uh, in this study, 20 students participated, but we have now repeated that. We had before that a pre-test, and afterwards we had a post-test. And then we had afterwards a seminar, which is uh, accompanying the school internship. And something about 22 students participated, but not all for this seminar participated over here. And we had a pre and post-test afterwards. What we did were semi-structured interviews, so of course we could get, find out something like awareness, willingness, anticipatory uh, components or reflective components. Uh, and we had an interview guideline which allowed us to uh, bring together the different data of the survey. So, and then we had in addition, especially to the internship, we had learning diaries and observation tasks. The students had to write a documentation about the task given to them. 
that could be related to what you are doing over here. Uh, so they had to uh, write uh, really reports about what they had seen. So, and uh, the f uh, our opportunity, opportunities in the uh, first seminar was we tried to introduce them to the uh, con concept of registers, of language re register, going back to the approach by Halliday and others. Uh, and then they were analyzing mathematical tasks and mathematical vignettes, that means short teaching situations, in order to identify teaching barriers being uh, 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 or coming out of, of language. And we made even se several self experiments where the students were uh, for, for, uh, promoted to notice the importance of language proficiency. And then uh, we even tried to, provo to uh, bring to them a few uh, 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 scaffolding activities where they could learn how to support future teachers. So, and what I've brought with me is now, and I didn't, do not show this video vignette because I have another one to show. Uh, we, uh, the, uh, if we fo focus on the second research question, that means which aspects of language in learning and teaching mathematics do prospective mathematics teachers notice and how do they react in specific situations. For, in order to examine this task, we had uh, one video vignette. It was uh, quite short, something about 10 minutes. And it was a real uh, 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 problem solving activity, a partner work, uh, and it was actually problem solving or mathematical word problem, and it's around the mathematical question of sand class. And that is a task taken from a nationwide test, so it's not very, you would, may think it's a little bit weird, but it is actually from our nationwide test. Uh, and then we had this interview guidelines based, based on our uh, noticing model, and we used the same video vignette in pre and post test design. I know that there's a lot of discussion around using the same video vignette, but on the other hand, it's very difficult to, to find an equivalent one. So uh, what we had was this following uh, question. A, a sand class contains 75 cu uh, cubic millimeter of sand. The constriction in the middle is so wide that 0.25 uh, is a cubic millimeter of sand can trickle down per second. Write down the functional equation so that the volume remaining in the upper half is related to the elapsed time and draw a graph of this function. Uh, I mean, it, it's, you already see that this contains a lot of, of language difficulties. And we have Lily and Naomi, bo both have uh, a, a kind of a migrant background. Uh, and what they write, wrote down as, a, uh, as um, uh, a graph, you see you have here the sand, and uh, they relate the time to the sand, which is actually means that they have simply reversed uh, uh, their axis. Uh, their axis. So uh, we asked. Uh, also, if we examine the task, uh, which was then to be analyzed by the students, you had to do, you see that they had to analyze that the students were asked write down the functional equation. So that f from x is related to x. So it's quite ob obvious which is dependent and which is the independent variable, at least if you are a math education student. So, uh, and, uh, uh, so it means you have the linguistic element in order to communicate which are independent and which are the dependent variable and what kind of function is it. Uh, and what Noemi and Lily did was simply they wrote down the functional equation that the elapsed time is related to the volume remaining in the upper half of the sand class. So, um, and we have an analyzed the data. We have ca carried out that with several students, and we are still in the process of analyzing the data. Uh, and we are now in the process of analyzing the first post test da data. Uh, we will carry out a few more interviews actually this week and next week. And what we could see in the pretest was the following. The students, most of the students were not able to see the switch of the coordinate axis. Although they had received a, 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 a solution of the task in advance. So it shouldn't have been too difficult to see, look, the students uh, uh, switched the, ax the axis. And if they noticed it, then they said something very superficial that, yes, okay, Noemi and Lily didn't know 
that time is always the x. I mean, that is a very easy thing. If always take a, a, a time as uh, uh, the independent variable, it will work in 80% uh, of the cases. So I mean, it's a very superficial argument. Uh, or they would say, look, the graph of Noemi, Noemi Lilly is also correct. I mean, to another question, it would have been correct. But I mean, in this task, it was very clear what uh, uh, the de dependent and the independent variable was. And then they said something like the text is hard to read, and they had no idea uh, what Noemi and Lily did, uh, had to say. So they remained on a very superficial uh, explanation, something like, oh, it was hard to read the task, something like that. And they didn't really go further. Um, so they had, didn't realize the language barriers which were really within this task. And I mean, which a, t a future um, mathematics teacher should be able to identify that this task has many linguistically, uh, linguistic barriers. So if we now look at, and, and as I said, we have just uh, started to analyze the post-test, then we could see that the students were more able after this seminar for one semester, that means 14 uh, uh, week, teaching weeks, um, 90 minutes uh, per week, uh, they could better identify the problems students had. So they could better describe uh, really uh, uh, that this kind of cases we have used, this kind of very complicated uh, uh, grammatical structure is really creating language barriers for the students. So, and uh, they would have been able to say, look, let's try to do it in a more easy way. So we have indications that this kind of seminars is really, uh, 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 has some kind of influence for the students, but of course the question is, how long will that last and will they be able to transfer it to other tasks? So that is actually one project we are around. Uh, we are doing, and I would like to show you a second one. I'm pretty certain that if I'm back in half a year or even earlier, uh, I will be able to have more results. But it's simply, you know, to show you some or give you some uh, insight in what we are doing. And of course, more is to come. That is actually the PhD project by Anna Orschulik. She is a practicing teacher and uh, two thirds uh, of her position is with us. Uh, and she is uh, analyzing future teachers' competence of noticing during internship. So what is going on during internship? And she refers to uh, the, um, the uh, framework of Shireen and Starr, who said a teacher is bombarded with a blooming, buzzing confusion of sensory data. So, and you have no idea what you should do. We all know this. And an adequate reaction on all these internal influences is really not possible. I mean, somebody is walking around and you should concentrate on what you are trying to explain to your students. And you have to filter these external influences and you have to decide what to focus and what to see. And that is, of course, how the awareness come in uh, and the reflexivity. And of course, he has to be, a teacher has to be able to observe and understand important classroom incidents. So the aim of the project is to develop learning opportunities in which future teachers learn how to focus their attention on important pedagogical classroom events, promote the ability to perceive important classroom situations, to interpret these, and to find alternatives or decide how a situation should be continued. So you see here, you see the PID model. And it's not only in this uh, 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 PhD study, it's in many other PhD studies around that we try to focus all on this model. It may have uh, deficits, but I mean, if you have something about 16 PhD st uh, uh, studies and 10 uh, postdoc studies around one model, you will create powerful uh, uh, um, knowledge and power powerful uh, results. So the development of the university seminar took into account uh, that uh, performance is situational. That means we go back to the last part of the uh, Blumiger and uh, other models. So it include more situational aspects in teaching in order to complement theoretical knowledge. Uh, you link uh, knowledge of teaching with episodic elements in order to get a, a differentiated view on lessons and you have to bring in case-based 
learning environment. So in order to get a more flexible knowledge and this case-based learning is something which we are now uh, trying to, prim to deepen it in a more theoretical way. This casuistic, as we call that in, in German, is, I don't know, know whether this is the uh, English word too. So we involve our future teachers in observation tasks with authentic documents, recordings of lessons, and of course, and that is very important in this project, we bring in our mentors as communicators from school. The mentors who are really looking, working with the students during their inter, the future teachers during internship, we want to bring them to university and work with them in order, first of all, to offer them some kind of in-service uh, activities and on the other hand, to bring in joint perspectives because in former times it was often the case that the mentor said something in school and then the university lecturer said something at university and it didn't uh, fit together. So that is actually the background of this uh, whole uh, activity. So uh, I think the research questions are clear. What kind of skills, situation, skills did the future teachers had at the beginning of their school, practical activities, their internship, how does that develop, and what kind of influences can we identify? So we have actually the following uh, uh, survey. We started with one uh, uh, a seminar in last uh, uh, autumn, uh, our autumn, your spring. Uh, and we did some kind of audio recording of reactions on the video vignette. I will show this video vignette to you in a minute. Then we had the intervention, namely the seminar, and then we had a post survey. And we repeated that with another group of students uh, with the same design in April. This will start and it will last until, uh, our, uh, until August, October. So, I have brought with me one of these uh, uh, video vignettes, it's actually a scripted video. So we always, a staged video, we always work with these kind uh, of video vignettes. There are a few, uh, the first one was an uh, authentic one, but I mean it su suddenly happened, so otherwise he would have used a, st a staged one. Uh, the video is sequence is taken from a mathematics classroom in a German comprehensive school. Uh, and the mathematical abilities of the class is heterogeneous. It's actually, it's year, uh, grade eight. And uh, you all know, are familiar with this kind of task. Uh, it's, it's a very easy one. On a farm, there are geese and cows. Altogether, there are 105 animals, and there are four times as much geese than cows on the farm. How many geese and how many cows are on the farm? And uh, we usually give before we do, uh, uh, we show the video, we give the solutions to the future teachers and we did that with practicing teachers in the TETS follow-up study. Uh, we use that um, in order to prevent or, uh, 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 the teachers from doing the task while the video is running. Because, I mean, math, math teachers would immediately uh, start to calculate. You can't prevent a teacher from doing calculations. So, I mean, in order to uh, avoid that, we did that. Ihr seht die Aufgabe an der Tafel. Lass uns die erste Gleichung gemeinsam finden. Hat schon jemand eine Idee? Alles klar? G plus K gleich 105. Marie? Dasselbe. Sven? Das habe ich auch. Kann jemand diese Gleichung erklären? Lara? Die gerne so und Kühe sind zusammen dafür. Hat jemand Fragen, Einwände oder Anmerkungen dazu? Okay, jetzt überlegt sich bitte jeder für sich allein, wie die zweite Gleichung warten muss. Gut. Ergebnisse. Eins, zwei, drei, wie immer. Nara? Hier ist das Ergebnis K, aber nicht stimmt. Weil wenn man jetzt 
4 mal 20 einsetzt, ist ja gleich 80, dann 20 ist das G und 80 das K, dann wäre ja mehr Q als Gänsehaut. Hä? 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 I mean, that is the video when you, and I mean, he saw that there is a lot of classroom disturbance and that was of course deliberately done. It's actually uh, one of our former staff, Andreas Busse, recognized him. And, but that is actually one of his classrooms, and we realized that we didn't clean the blackboard very carefully enough. You realize that afterwards, you wouldn't realize that while you are doing it. So, I mean, what we had, first of all, methodical considerations. So, for example, you see uh, the teacher said, look, can you please explain the first equation? So, about teaching methods, securing results. Then the second one was, of course, classroom management, effective learning time, I mean, there were many uh, uh, errors made by the teachers concerning classroom management. Uh, uh, he didn't uh, 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 handle learning time eff 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 uh, effectively. Uh, the disorders were not handled, but there were apparently routines. You could see it one, two, three as usual. So there were routines established. So that was then understanding of variables and of equations. So that is something uh, the, uh, the future teachers should recognize. So. The methodical approach was as following. The, teach, the future teachers saw at the beginning of our seminar accompanying the internship. They saw the video and they were asked to describe observations of situations that are relevant for teaching. So you had to see it was they saw, they were sitting over there, saw the video and they were asked, please stop whenever something important occurs and describe that. And they were sitting alone in the room, uh, actually in my office. So they were sitting there, and then it was audio recorded what they were saying. So, and they should describe, so the class task, stop when you want to describe something which is important and relevant for teacher, teaching. And especially, if possible, provide alternative reactions. So do not only say, oh, the teacher didn't react and uh, the students were far too quick with their solutions uh, or mathematical errors were made, provide alternative reactions. And at the end of the video, the future teachers were asked, decide how the situation should be continued. So what should the teacher do now? What should he do? And name the three most important observations and give reasons why these are important. So here the reflexivity comes, of course, in. So we call that reason-based uh, 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 decisions or interpretations. So we had after and afterwards we had a semi-structured interview uh, uh, based on this uh, uh, on this uh, evaluation uh, and especially directly after the post survey. Uh, and then we asked them uh, for differences in noticing the, what we already could. So we evaluated the interviews and then we went back to the student, to, to the test person, the future teachers, and said, why did you answer that? Why did you say that? Can you please explain it to us? So we have until now only, I can see that it's already quite a, a huge data set what you are creating. Uh, and we have uh, evaluated the data of six future teachers so far. And what we did in order to go back to our, remember that I said that we are going, referring to this expertise model, mm -hmm. so to the ex a novice expert model. So what we did in advance was we evaluated five practicing teachers uh, who are working in school and said, do the same. Uh, and then we had additional data. For example, you should know that in Germany, all our future teachers are studying two subjects. So that is very different uh, from over here. That's the reason why it takes us so long. Uh, so then, of course, external characteristics, how often the future teachers stopped, what kind of pauses they made, and it, that is afterwards then co uh, related to the PID model. And we used some kind of software, MaxCodeR, referring to the text analysis methods of Cookards. Uh, so what we could see concerning the perception, uh, nearly all students, future teachers uh, and teachers selected the same situation. So they paused in similar situations 
and they refer to the similar situations. For example, when the students were really, really getting bored and the teachers didn't do anything. I mean, everybody said, look, the teacher should have intervened and said, look, behave carefully, or he should have simply continued earlier. Uh, then, um, I mean, that was something which was similar for both groups. Then, uh, so it means concerning perception, there was no significant difference between teachers and future teachers. Although, what we could see is that the future teachers didn't holistically uh, 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 percept the situation. That means they commented separately and they hardly did any connections to the previous situations. For example, uh, it's very important that one, when uh, the teacher asked, can you please expl explain what the first equation means? Then one student said, the, uh, the goose and the cows are together 105. That's of course very wrong, because that leads to the wrong, uh, uh, percept uh, wrong interpretation of variable, because the correct wording would have been the number of cows and the number of, go uh, uh, of co uh, goose uh, are, uh, are equal to 105. So, uh, I mean, that is something which uh, uh, the, uh, the teachers see uh, holistically. They say, look, this error at the end refers to the missing correction of the f teacher here at the beginning. He needed to correct this formulation and then maybe the, teach the students would still have made errors, but at least he didn't provoke it. So that was nothing our future teachers say they really said one made one description and another description, but they did not connect that. They didn't see this causal relation. Um, uh, and uh, the te practicing teachers referred quite often to the opening situation that, look, the situation was simply too unclear. There was no clear explanation of the understanding of a variable, and that caused the problem. When it comes to interpretation, uh, we, you can really see that the future teachers had many difficulties in interpreting it, the, uh, the, uh, the situation, in contrast uh, to uh, practicing te teachers. And what our future teachers especially did, they reacted, uh, they focused on classroom management. So they did not so strongly interpret the mathematical errors the teachers made which then influenced afterwards uh, the problems of the students. And they did, of course, not provide us with good ideas how to continue. But they said, look, classroom management was a poor teacher, uh, didn't intervene uh, early enough. So they referred to the surface structure. I mean, it's not so uh, new. We already know that, that uh, novice teachers are focusing on the surface elements. And especially something like didactical or methodical decisions were uh, not uh, proposed. And the teaching disorders, that is really the, uh, a strong point uh, by many of the future teachers, in contrast to the uh, practicing teachers. Uh, when it comes to decision making, there are the strongest difference between novice and expert, and that was expected. When you really see how the future teachers were answering, they were pausing, they look, Hmm, what shall I propose? And you realize, pausing, they had no idea. I mean, they realized there was a mistake. Yes, but what should they do? What should I do as a teacher in this situation where you have this error? I mean, of course, you can prepare yourself in advance because uh, you know what you are teaching and then you can uh, develop yourself a good explanation. But they were really so long breaks while speaking. They had, look, maybe we could develop, uh, explain in more detail the notion of variable uh, that could maybe probably enrich. So you have all these kind of, of words which show how insecure the students are. Uh, and they were concerning how to act really. There were only hints. So there was really no alternative reactions were proposed. So you could really, especially when it comes to decision making, you saw a big difference between the novice and the experts, and you could really see what, what we have to do in order to bring our students a little bit further to become an expert status at the end of teacher education. So what we, of course, need to do, we need to take back this message to the uh, uh, structure of our seminar, maybe bring in more 
uh, uh, video-based activities, think more about alternatives. That means really uh, strengthen al uh, uh, alternatives, discuss misconceptions. I mean, that is something which, and related to actions you can take or measures you can take as a, as a, 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 a teacher, and of course, show connections between the different topics. So that is something we will include now in our new uh, seminar structures. So the outlook is, of course, as said, we are in the middle in the pro of the process of analyzing the data. Uh, and of course, we want to analyze the data concerning uh, how strong is the change in the noticing skills. We want to identify influences. And of course, then we want to adjust the seminar concept. And as said, we are going to repeat the whole sequence once more so in order to get a richer data set. Um, so the overall prospects in order to close is there are uh, these two examples I've brought with me are typical for the kind of research we are doing in this project. And as already said, it's a big bunch uh, of studies around uh, and uh, expect uh, that all of them or most of them uh, will be able to submit their thesis until the end of next year uh, and the postdocs may uh, do their postdoc activities with publications in journals. So the question is, of course, what kind of uh, influence will that have on our overall teaching in education? So what does that mean for teacher education at the University of Hamburg? Do we see something which is really, do we see a change? Can we measure that? And we are actually, in, uh, in addition, doing some kind of competence measure, com competency measurement. And I mean, we really would love to see, at least at the end of next year, to see some kind of changes in the competencies, at least in, when it comes to math pedagogy, and uh, we're, doing, uh, we're doing that in math, in English, and in German, when it comes to these kind of competencies in these three subjects. And of course, we really want to find out something about the long-term effects. And of course, we know that we need a longer press. In three and a half years, you cannot change everything. But we, if we are, uh, can uh, uh, contribute or can develop interesting results from an academical point of view, then I'm pretty certain that we can continue for the five years afterwards. So I thank you very much for your attention.